Kula Women's Wellness Tribe, the podcast. Get comfortable, get your walking shoes on, and let's get going. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Kula Women's Wellness Podcast. And I have a lovely guest with me today. I feel like we've got lots to talk about. So lots to learn, lots for you guys to listen to. I have Stephanie with me. She is a self-love coach. And actually, before we started the call, when I was asking it, I've got a huge list of things here that 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 she does. So she's got a lot to share here. So self-love coach with a mission to help people to feel love, have fun, experience magical pleasure, and as well as this, a quantum healer. So working within the quantum realm as well. So I'm very excited. All of that stuff just lights me up. Mm. Um, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I oh. think we have a lot that about to say. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and I, I love this. So yeah. one of the, the reasons I started my podcast was because, you know, you have these conversations with people and I'm just like, everyone needs to hear this. Yeah. And it's, it's a perfect way for people who, especially women who maybe feel a little bit witchy and they're trying to get out there and, you know, here we are, here we are, and here you are. So share a little bit about yourself before we get into it. Yeah. Okay. So gosh, I think where I'm at now on my journey is really culminated in the last 12 months or so. And before that, I've had quite a lot of movement in my life. I'm from Canada originally. I moved to the UK um, initially for eight months. And then I've been here for 19 years. (laughs) Um, And yeah, I think in the last few years, I really... I used to work in corporate and I really got to a point where I wanted to help people and I wanted to feel better. I wanted to experience life more fully and I didn't really know what that was going to look like. And through just a series of random events, I initially fell into metaphysics and then started to work with subconscious mind through a modality called belief coding. And here I am now just actually feeling like I'm embodying all of the things that I wanted in love and pleasure and fun and being able to help people and actually from a space of feeling really energized by it and not depleted. Which, yeah. And yeah. what what were the events that sort of led you away from corporate into this world of magic? Um, well, initially, so I'd had a career that I'd progressed really quickly in I had a really big job and then my role was made redundant really suddenly and that kind of pulled everything out from under me and I then shortly after went through I I ended a relationship that I've been in for for quite a long time and my whole life was just kind of like ooh, and I just had fun for a while so I I did different jobs went back to corporate for a little bit and I just knew you know my heart was just like This is not what I want. I felt really caged and I knew it wasn't about finding the right job. It was, there was something more for me and it just felt so scary though, because I'd never worked for myself. And I think that piece of saying like, okay, I'm out here and I, me, I will work with other people and help them feels really strange to initially do that or it did for me anyways. Um, But yeah, it was, it was almost like I was being forced out of it. And yeah. then, yeah, I think every job I kept trying to cling on to just felt worse and worse and worse. So, yeah, and I think that's how the universe works. When you're when you're meant to be a light worker or a witch or helping other people, it's like no, no, we're gonna one rubbish job after another, and you're like trying to hold on to the corporate ladder, and it's just like yeah. get off. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, tell me a little bit about the uh, subconscious work. That you do you can go into the science as well if you like just how does that because it fascinates me the subconscious mind fascinates me anyway so just yeah go yeah whatever you want to share share <laughs> so into yeah I I mean I absolutely love it I think last year I was 
probably around, I think it was around February. Um, and I was really like, okay, I'm, I know I'm meant for something else. The whole corporate thing's not working for me. Like, what is it? Like, show me something. And then I came across um, belief coding and it was quite a new modality at the time. And it really mi- uses a mixture of kinesiology, NLP and other different modalities, but sequenced in a way where we just use muscle testing to access the subconscious mind. And so you're working with someone's discomfort. So say they want to quit smoking or they have physical pain or really deep anxiety, you can work with the subconscious directly and bring up whatever it is that coded that information into your cells. So where is that, you know, our body is always communicating to us and actually then accessing whatever that is, neutralizing the energy of that point and then coding in new energy. So really bringing in like all the great things when you're like, oh, I want to feel more love. I want to love myself. I want to feel like I'm supported and loved and so on. So it's kind of going from what you want and then going from what's in the way of that right now. So if I came to you with anxiety, how what do you how does the session work then so it finds the root of my anxiety physically mentally or yeah I mean I'd say with anxiety like it can be a really big thing so if someone said anxiety would I'd root it down a little bit more to okay let's start with something what's what's most alive for you right now you know what's it bringing up and sometimes actually that's just the surface level of it there'll be something behind it and it's created a whole bunch of habits around it. Um, but it could be that you have physical symptoms. It could be that literally your mind's always busy. So I had a client and they're okay with me talking about this, but they just had constant thoughts and they, they just said, like, I just want to relax. And it turned out it was one really big memory, something that had happened 20 years ago. And we actually just neutralized the energy from that moment. And that was it. Okay. Okay. That was it. Is it like, do you sort of guide the person back to that moment, like a, similar to hypnosis? So they tell you what that moment is? Yeah. Well, when you're doing the muscle testing, it'll start to bring stuff up or even before, sometimes just even talking about what's alive now I'll often say to them, let me know if anything pops into your head or if someone does or if a feeling starts in your body. And then we can thread back from there and delve into what it actually is. But we don't really spend a lot of time talking about the past. Yeah. It's more like what's live now. And that will ultimately, the subconscious mind is getting, is like a sponge, isn't it? It just takes <laughs> everything in. And a lot of what we experience now is from when we were zero to seven everything we experienced from parents, teachers, friends, bullying, you know, our parents saying something about money, that's all gone into our subconscious. And then it keeps producing more experiences that just reaffirm what's there. Yeah. Yeah. And funny, you should mention money actually, because I had, I actually had another session to get into my subconscious for my own money beliefs. And Mine went back, my mind took me back to, I think I was eight years old and I could name the shop and I'd asked my mum for something and she didn't have enough money. But then I didn't want, I was upset, but I didn't want to be upset because I didn't want to upset my mum, if that makes sense. And this is state, Mm -hmm. and I thought about this. And when I was under, this is what's in my subconscious to how I am now of being, you know, overly fruit. not fruitful is it fruit frugal (laughs) with my money and worrying and you know not expecting things because I don't want to upset other people and it was really interesting and it literally blew my mind just that this little thing's been living rent-free in my subconscious for 20 however many years so it's uh it's crazy it's wild isn't it yeah just for anyone listening um if they you know people talk about the subconscious all the time and it's easy for me to go oh yeah this was in my subconscious mm. but anyone who's like, what does that even mean 
how do you explain it to you know someone who's like is this my sub what is the subconscious subconscious yeah I think for me and this is really just from my own interpretation of it I, I know there's a lot of science around it so maybe someone will <laughs> think this is incorrect but I feel like for me how I envision it is that we've got trillions of cells that we're made up of and all of those cells absorb information all the time and previously before we became aware of that you're absorbing information so it's just whatever's going in is going in and those cells then act with interact with the universe or energy or, or however you want to see it and it just it always is mirroring back to you what what is coded into there what you've spoken into it what you've thought into it what you've received into it so I literally just feel like I see lots of sparkly cells all over my being and like around me and those are always speaking to my environment and then I experience what's in those cells across the board and you know I think if there's something say we mentioned money and there's that experience that created that belief I can almost see it like as a distortion yeah. so like we're perfect and we're whole and there's nothing actually to fix but you might have that one little cell somewhere that's got something that's just not quite in alignment with the desire that you have. So it's just. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That cell may have been affected like when you're a child and you're carrying that with you. So it's sort of there throughout. Yeah. That's kind of how I see. Um, and I always see my subconscious kind of this, there's a, just a little bit at the back of my head <laughs> that these things go in and then they, are kind of locked away and they come out when when I don't want them to or you know when they have feel like they've got something to say but they're not the thoughts right mm. in the mind it's not like right I need to get up at seven I've got to go to work I'm gonna eat this this and this it's something that's it's a tiny little box like at the bottom of the wardrobe you know that you forget about and then you open it up and it's all of those little memories that we don't want to talk about all of the time but yeah so I, yeah. I love the visual of the colors your your cells as well the scene that yeah they're yeah. just everywhere and sparkling and then there'll be that little little nugget there that you get to and you're like okay you're not sparkling you're yeah. not matching that that what I want and and the thing is as well that goes with it like the memory you mentioned about being a kid and, and hearing that whatever emotion and feeling you experience in that moment you've then locked that into your body and yeah. You know, we, there's a huge other part of it that is, I think, just learning how to interact with our feelings and allowing them to move through us, alchemizing them. And that in itself creates a whole other layer of freedom that we're not just continuously piling in more and keeping it locked in. It's like when, I don't know if you notice your dogs, if they're like something stressful happens and they shake, they're literally shaking the energy off. Ah, oh, Yeah. Yeah. Same when they're yawning, they're moving stuff through so they don't keep it locked in. And, and, you know, a lot of us just weren't taught to interact with our feelings like that. It was like, oh, be quiet so you don't upset your parents. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And that, that makes, I was just, <laughs> when you said that, I was thinking, well, that's why they have Zoomies. That's what the Zoomies is. They have this energy that they need to just yeah. zoom around. Yeah. And I think even as humans, not that we, you know, well, you can go and have zoomies if you want to, but <laughs> but I think yeah. you know days when you are like have, you, you can't sit down and you have this energy and it's you know you need to release it some way. Not that I'm gonna, I'm not not running or anything, but maybe just <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it after. <laughs> well, yeah. but it is that feeling of you know oh, I'm high energy today, I'm high vibe, and people do say it, and it's mm. I think it's understanding that it is it is an actual energy it's a vibration that you're giving out and it's how you use that and the same with and I'm sure you 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 pick this up when you meet people and you know that they're high vibe and some people who are really low energy and low vibe and you just don't don't want to be around them and it's the same kind of it's the the cells that the colors and you know picking up on that yeah yeah it's all just different vibration isn't it you really yeah. and you can almost feel sometimes when it's just and it's not that lower high is good or bad 
it just it feels totally different and yes yeah it, yeah it's um it's almost like you perceive each other differently yes yeah totally and I, I think I think when you understand energy as well and frequency and vibration and if you're listening to this and you're like what are they talking about it's it it's that feeling that you get and I think women our intuition is one of our superpowers you know we've got this magic within us and you'll know from when you talk like, oh I don't, I'm not quite sure when you have that feeling when you meet somebody and your intuition is picking up either high vibe or low vibe then sorry you've, you're not quite sure what it is but that's your intuition that's what we, what, what we're using there yeah uh, what was I going to say Tell me a little bit about your quantum healing as well. That fits, that fits quite nicely with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I It's something I'm very new to, but I absolutely love it. Um, and I started studying a little bit with the course, but I, I'd also experienced it already, not realizing what it actually was at the time. And I've just spent some time exploring it on my own and then asking friends and my partner to let me do little sessions on them. And I think it still really blows my mind to see the actual results that I've seen from it and just how it, do you know what? It's literally helping someone or even myself to totally get out of the way to just completely, you know, it's like you almost take someone to a space where there's no resistance. They're not thinking anymore about fixing themselves or or what they need or how it should look. It's literally just allowing that source energy to, to recalibrate yeah. your frequency in a way. And even if, like, they don't even need to understand what that is, um, but just bringing them to a really relaxed state and then it definitely probably goes into, I, I don't like to say woo-woo, but definitely. Yeah. usually at the end of a session, my friends are like, that felt amazing, but it was so weird. <laughs> like, what was going on? And it's it's it feels really beautiful because they do just get to relax. They're not having to, like, trudge through all the trauma or whatever it is that they were carrying around. And it just, you know, one session can be so amazing and just transformative. Yeah. And like a big reset almost. And what, why, what's the, when people come to you, if there's anyone listening now thinking like, do I need this? Or, you know, if they're not quite sure, what, what symptoms or the way that people feel that you'd be like, you need to try this. I know a lot of people, we go to the doctors or you're on Google and you just don't feel right. So what, what is the feeling? So if anyone's listening and they're like, oh, that's what that's what it is. And then they can then look into the, the energy of it rather than a doctor, for example. Yeah, I would say, well, actually, one of the biggest things that had shifted for me and really changed how I choose what I think I need or not was to everything I was doing before. And that included quantum healing and the subconscious stuff and even doing it for myself. One, there was a lot of stuff going on in my life in the last couple of years and it was really heavy, really chaotic and I was doing all this stuff and I had all these tools and I still felt really awful and I, I could feel different, mm. but it was always still, I think the approach I had was that I needed my external circumstances to change as well so that I could feel better. And it wasn't until I actually realized, okay, it comes from within me I don't have to feel good about this situation that's happening, but I can absolutely bring the things that I want into my life now. And then also just see all of these other modalities as tools that I get to enjoy on my journey and that do make me feel really good. And I think from a quantum healing point of view, it could literally be anything. It really, and it's, so if it is a physical symptom that you have that you've had for a long, long time and it's just not clearing, if it's just something that's popped up, it, it'll it bring you to a space as well where if there's any messages for you in that, because that's what it is as well. It's your, your higher self is kind of going like, hey, you really want this reality. You're really getting in the way of it here. And this is how I'm trying to tell you. So it's, you know, if it's longstanding depression, if it's, just a fear overtaking that first step. 
in your business and you want to connect in and then see, you know, work with some guides or bring in crystal energy or there's, there's just so much you could do and be open to. And it's, um, even if you don't know almost, but you just want to see what could come through for you. Yeah. And I think that, that's the thing as well. So you mentioned woo woo and I know a lot of people are, Oh, it's woo woo. But I know that, well, if you, if it's everything else is not working, then what have you got to lose? There's, it's, you know, there's no, there's no negative that will come from it. So mm. I practice Reiki and, you know, mm. some of my clients, oh, like, I have one client, she has Reiki, but she's like, oh, I'm not quite sure, but I feel good after. I'm like, well, there you go. You don't need to understand or believe that there's energy. But if you're spending 45 minutes lying down and you're in a meditative state and you wake up after and you don't feel anxious and you have that lift, whether you believe the the spirituality and the, the woo-woo, inverted commas, of it, you feel better and you don't need to go and, you know, take tablets and, you know, you feel relaxed and you're calm. And she's like, oh, yeah. And, like, she still has it. She's still – but she's always like, oh, I'm not sure what this <laughs> – um, but she she – the sensation after and I think just taking that leap of right I've been to the doctors I've sat here depressed I've been anxious or this pain in my shoulder just won't go I've had massages x y and z what have you got to lose to go and try and you know is it your energy the frequency is it your quantum field is there something that can be lifted energetically that is going to help and I just think everyone should just take take the leap and you know to dip a toe into the spiritual world because science and spirituality there's a very fine line between the two isn't there yeah I think more and more people are seeing that actually okay what used to work is really not working for me I'm just still feeling the same and opening up to the energetics of it and, and how we can do that and I, I do say I think the quantum field is just a space where you're kind of out of your body for a minute. So all of that stuff that you come with from your conscious mind, where you're like, oh, you really get to just kind of go off into yeah. the space. That's, you know, it's just light. It's it's completely different. It'll just work with you energetically instead of working directly with the symptoms of your body. Yeah. And do you think, so I found there was a huge shift in people after COVID I feel mm. like people, I don't know if it's just with, within my circles or it, because I kind of had a big shift after that people are moving away from the big pharmaceutical companies and they do, they, they do want to investigate other ways. I know they've always been around for, you know, hundreds of years, thousands of years, but do you, did you, do you feel like there's been a shift in people not trusting what's coming from other areas and wanting to go to more holistic healers. Yeah, for sure. I really, I think more and more, even if they're not finding what the alternative is, they're not necessarily wanting to fall into Western medicine, which does have its merits for, for certain things. But yeah, I think a lot more people have maybe been forced to really step back and feel into what feels right to them rather than what has actually just been the norm for them up until now. Yeah, rather than what's being prescribed to, yeah. to, to you know, you're taking that step. And I think yeah. I, before COVID, it didn't, you know, I, I, I've i always been very aware, no, not always, you know, when I was younger, I would feel a headache come in, so I'd take a tablet and I was very much, you know, oh, there's a tablet for that, there's a tablet for that, try this. And I'd go to the doctors and get antibiotics. And the more I entered the spiritual world and I was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to try not, I'm going to use, you know, eucalyptus for my headache instead of taking a tablet. And then COVID hit and I feel like, you know, the vaccine and everyone was like, what's in it? Da, da, da. And I was like, oh my God, I've never actually thought about what is in any of the things that I'm taking. Yeah. And yeah. I think then I was like, right, that is it. And that was, I think, maybe a push from the universe for me to go in you know, find out about frequency healing, sound healing, you know, recently, I mean, mm. the healing, it, the device, you know, these things that have come into my way, into my way, I guess they went my way, into my path. <laughs> um, yeah. That's kind of, you know, I can't remember the last time I took a painkiller. Um, yeah. 
you know yeah. it's and I feel like people in your role um we've got these witchy women that you know hundreds of years ago it would have been that you know you were the medicine woman you were healing and it was accepted yeah. you know you go to your garden and pull out some herbs and make some medicine and you heal with your hands and you know yeah. it would that would be the norm and now it's kind of like it's coming back which I really I really um, love yeah it's, I'm so here for it and I think yeah. it really allows people to become this, their own source of well-being instead of going like okay I need to go to someone else to give me something and tell me what I need to do they can come from within and be like okay let me explore this like what okay maybe I do want this kind of session maybe I want to work with someone that's going to help me with this but it's not this disempowering well someone else has all this knowledge and then they're going to tell me how to fix myself so I feel yeah. like a lot of the work we do now is helping people maybe dismantle what is causing their discomforts and their pain but also in a way that's empowering to them and they can actually choose their journey and, and be like great you know I still get body massages because I love it I'm never trying to fix my body to a point where I never need a massage again like all of these things you know you mentioned sound healing they're great I love it even yeah. if I'm not feeling bad I'll I'll go for a sound healing session just yeah you know we're multi-dimensional people so yeah exactly and that's it. a good point I've never actually thought about you go for a massage because it makes you feel makes you feel good like you don't wait for a backache to yeah. you know you might but a lot of the time you're like, oh, I'm gonna have a massage because you want to relax you want to calm down you want to chill and it's a bit of a treat and you're looking after your body it's kind of prevent you know prevention's better than cure and yeah. um as you were talking then in my head it just came in that you are the medicine like, we are our own medicine yeah it's- and we get to open up to it though from a point of view of community and sisterhood and brotherhood and we get to support each other and it's you know I think that's one of the biggest things as well that changed for me was actually being with more people and and more people coming through and wanting to have these things for themselves and really tapping into each other's knowledge and wisdom and and yeah magic so yeah and it is magic it is it's it's magic and like you say the community and you it's always you're always learning like you think like oh yeah yeah you know you read you watch podcast listen to podcasts and then you'll speak to somebody who says something from a different point of view and you're like oh my god mind blown and it's just <laughs> and, <laughs> oh my god. and it's so it's so fascinating um oh is there anything else that you'd like to share any pearls of wisdom or anything that you think anything that pops up in your work that you think the listeners would like to to maybe mm. add into their day or Mm, I think just go for it if there's something that you're feeling really even if it's a little nudge even if it's just you know a really strong pull to something whatever it is trust that you know it can't really go wrong it's it's not about making making the right or wrong decision you're not going to mess up and really allowing just that part of you that your soul wants to to come forth and really just allow you to live the most fullest expression of yourself yeah yeah I love that that's perfect oh thank you so much thank you Uh, yeah I honestly I just love recording podcasts because I'm just you know if there's any like shock or disbelief or like excitement in my voice it's all natural (laughs) I love so much. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. I've learned a lot and I hope mm-hmm. everyone too uh, as well. I will put all of your information in the show notes. If anyone's listening though and just wants to type away, where can they find you? What what do you use? Instagram? Instagram. And it's all one word, Stephanie Agnes Dunphy. Um I'll not spell that out right now. <laughs> Yeah, I'll put it in the notes. I'll put it. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. And yeah, I'll put that there. I wrote that down as well. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much, Stephanie. I've loved having you. And I'll and speak to you soon. See you. And that's it today, everyone.
everybody. I hope you have a lovely week and I'll see you again next week. Don't forget, five stars, download, tell your friends. You're amazing.